Hello everyone, today from Plenty with Sulu, we are going to discuss about a very important topic that is about Alzheimer and dementia. According to the latest WHO data published in 2020, Alzheimer's and dementia deaths in Sri Lanka reached 6,939 or 5.98 of total deaths. The age-adjusted death rate is 27.62 per 100,000 of population and Sri Lanka ranked 14 in the world. Isn't it alarming? Anyhow, do you know there is a foundation in Sri Lanka who are helping these uh, patients and their families? Today, Plenty with Sulo is brought from that venue that is called Lanka Alzheimer's Foundation. Today, we have Professor Shaham Williams, President of Lanka Alzheimer's Foundation since 2019, joined as a board member. He's a professor in psychiatric. Hello, Professor Shehan. Hello. Professor, I thought to discuss with you today about the sickness because you are the best person to speak about it and it's something which is alarming with the WHO data uh, related to the dementia. So first I'll ask you, what is this Alzheimer's means? Is it a, a sickness or it's something to do with our mental health? Right. Thank you for this opportunity to speak about this important condition which will affect uh, maybe any of us or could affect any of us uh, as we age. Um, so Alzheimer's is a condition that brings about uh, overall what we call a syndrome, a constellation or a group of symptoms which mm -hmm. result in a condition called dementia. Uh, I think many of uh, you may have heard about dementia. Um, the main cause globally today is Alzheimer's disease. So um, both are more or less one and the same, mm -hmm. but dementia is the bigger issue where there are other causes as well which can cause uh, this whole syndrome, as I call, of symptoms which result in a person um, struggling particularly with relation to their mental functions, that is okay. their cognitive, which we call their ability to think and act. And that is the main deficit that we see in dementia as well as Alzheimer's. So dementia is part of our uh, segment of Alzheimer's or how is it too different? Yes, so dementia is the overall name mm -hmm. we uh, designate when a person gets, as I said, memory problems as well as difficulties in thinking and acting, uh, usually coming on with age. Uh, Alzheimer's is the main cause of this condition. The okay. disease, the main disease that causes this is Alzheimer's but there are some other conditions also, some of which may be treatable. Um, for instance, uh, due to certain uh, hormonal problems, okay. for instance like uh, thyroid issues also and um, uh, other uh, diseases like long-term kidney disease and so on people can still get dementia and uh, these are other conditions which can contribute to dementia sometimes but the commonest cause is this condition called Alzheimer's disease um, which is why uh, we have named uh, our foundation which works for all dementias not just for Alzheimer's uh, however uh, the name Alzheimer's is an important condition that I think everybody should know about and hence we have stuck to this name uh, rather than just confining ourselves or just using this umbrella term dementia but we look after and we are concerned about all people with dementia okay great so if i ask you what cause to get this dementia because people want to know normally they think this is something that they have worked hard or something someone has made something so sri lanka has a lot of clarifications and 
So I want to ask you, what is the real cause for this? Yeah. So, uh, as mentioned, dementia is due to a uh, variety of factors. Um, both uh, what we call genetic or physical reasons as well as environmental reasons. Particularly when it comes to conditions like Alzheimer's disease, genes or genetics play an important role. Sometimes you may realize that dementia runs in families. For instance, when somebody develops dementia, we, when we inquire from them, they have brothers or sisters who are also suffering from the same condition. And in other instances, uh, their parents also may have had a similar condition. So genetics uh, have a role in bringing on the condition. However, even with a genetic predisposition, we can do certain things which may help us um, overcome uh, this condition or delay its onset by living in a healthy way. So what do you mean is if a mother has and the children can find of healthy ways to delay it to get it, but is it saying that the children will get it? No, not necessarily. So it's not something we are there yeah, is direct transmission or anything like that. Um, there may be uh, children who will never get the disease, but sometimes some of the children may be at higher risk of getting this condition. So it is not um, directly implied that just because a mother has had it, the children also will get it. Uh, as you said, you said there are varieties and some are treatable. During the pregnancy also some of the um, women get it. Is it same on a come under same umbrella or is it separate thing? That's really a separate condition. So okay. pregnancy is a different condition. They are um, due to hormonal changes and so on. Mothers are prone to develop certain disturbances. But that is very different from dementia. That is treatable and they recover and they well after that. After, after aging will they get it back? So the problem with in what happens in dementia which we usually diagnose later on is that it is a progressive condition. Okay. It's not something that can be cured. Right. So we have to uh, see how best we can prevent the decline and help the person still enjoy and maintain a quality of life. Uh, which will be beneficial to them as well as to the society and the families around them. So that is the whole objective of uh, what we do because uh, we cannot cure it and there is no medicine yet in the world uh, that can be used to cure dementia. Right, okay. So um, as you said, there are different type of dementia and it depends on the age, depends on the hormone and everything. So what are the symptoms that people can identify this is going to happen because many people hardly understand they think something wrong with some sort. What are the symptoms? Yeah, so that's a very important question. People with dementia can present in very different ways. The commonest uh, presentation as you, already, or as you may know is forgetfulness, yeah. right? Now all of us forget a lot of things, I'm sure, when we are busy and so on, you know, we have our moments when we've forgotten a lot of um, activities, a lot of things that we need to do. However, uh, if somebody is forgetting very frequently, and sometimes we don't, as families, even realize this, because when it comes to older adults, um, uh, children are very busy and so on, so they rarely have conversations with their uh, parents. parents. So sometimes when uh, certain things crop up and when I see them, maybe I, when I ask them about memory, they say, no doctor, the memory is fine. In fact, she remembers all these old things. Yeah, she went to school and what happened with her old friends and all these stories she's relating all the time. But then when I ask them about day-to-day -day current activities, we have forgotten uh, that what they, uh, as to what they had for lunch or what they had for tea. In fact, those are the main issues. They start forgetting immediate things. So sometimes there are conflicts between 
say for instance the daughter and the mother or even the daughter in law and the mother in law yes because she has said a tea but then says you haven't given me tea and asked for tea four or five times and then the daughter in law thinks she is just being a nuisance and trying to be difficult or when the son comes she says and son asks mommy have you had tea she says no nobody gave me tea and the daughter in law gets very upset because she has already given a tea uh, or cups three cups of tea so in such instances it is important to recognize that this may be the sign that this person is getting dementia and then think of meeting a doctor to investigate or assess this further at our foundation we even give free memory assessment so memory screening using accepted standard methods where we will uh, assess that and give a little report which they can take to their doctor and discuss the findings so memory problems are the initial problems but there can be many other different uh, presentations where people sometimes can become suspicious of others in fact uh, think that the neighbors are trying to do something against them and get angry with them and so on so there are various other difficulties also which may sometimes present as dementia for instance there is another form of dementia called for lebi body dementia where people sometimes have visual hallucinations which is they see things which are not there so the person may say that in the evening they are seeing various people coming into the house and going out and the others may get upset because there is nobody visiting them as such but this person may be talking about various people coming to the house and going out so these are all different presentations that may uh, occur uh, in a, a person who gets dementia i'm going to ask you professor is it for only for the aging people or it can happen to the young people also so dementia is almost always a problem that comes on with age but some people can develop it even in their 40s or 50s okay particularly if they have certain uh, genetic changes Okay. Uh, or strong family history, which may predispose or which may make them vulnerable to dementia at a very young age, or even for some people who may have serious head injury uh, mm-hmm. or strokes and so on at a young age, they can develop dementia at a young age. So it it is not just a mental illness; it comes with. Uh, many other aspects It's right certainly a very much a neurological disorder okay. due to certain changes in the brain okay uh professor i'm going to ask you about this how whether we can slow down the decline from medicine or there is any um, lifestyle changes that even the i would say the diseases has to follow and also the family yes so see um, dementia is also what we call a non communicable disease yeah like diabetes and hypertension high blood pressure and so on so um one of the main things in preventing dementia is about living a healthy life and also making sure that we don't have other diseases or control other diseases early okay. like proper treatment of blood pressure controlling our diabetes and also making sure that we don't have high cholesterol these are the main issues that even in sri lanka we are facing today we are eating too much sugar we are probably eating too much uh, fat and uh, these things result in what we normally call the combination of symptoms which result in metabolic syndrome so we need to make sure that we all have a healthy uh, body mass index so we have a healthy weight for our height and we exercise regularly and also make sure that we control other diseases because eventually conditions like high blood pressure and diabetes may result in lack of blood flow to the brain or mm-hmm. impair the blood flow to the brain which will affect or bring on dementia much earlier okay. so living a healthy di- life from your young days exercising regularly and also keeping your mind or brain active 
uh, from young days is important so even into old age i think we all need to be like you <laughs> i know you're young uh, have to from this age keep our mind and our brain uh, active what type of brain now everyone says brain act- activities and all that so for young people what type of brain activities they should be doing so for young people i think even stimulating their brain by always doing studies education reading learning new things um even i mean for many of us learning the computer and trying to even with the phone and so on trying to learn new things is all very important and even into old age we should be doing these things occupy the brain is right. much important so i'm glad that uh, uh, even retirement age has now been extended because i think 55 is too young a age to retire and uh, the earlier we retire or the earlier we stop working the more uh, difficulty we will have and perhaps even more incidence of dementia because many people will stop using Uh, they are brain yes. for various activities so any activity uh, where we are thinking and acting is important we don't have to know specific games or anything like that but even after you retire you must make sure that you are exercising as well as using your brain that's when maybe it's useful to learn something new uh, learn to play some mind games maybe play games like scrabble or sudoku or even do uh, other games like chess or whatever that you think is important even doing gardening will be very useful because again you're using not just your physical body but also your brain to plan to plant to beautify the garden you're thinking and acting so all these activities will be very important in fact if we are all active i think we will all be able to improve even the production in Sri Lanka productivity and production will improve. So, as you said, healthy life and mental health, the mental activities making occupy your mental will help us to decline and also to prevent this disease. Uh, Professor, what is your role in this uh, foundation? Uh, at present, I am the president of the foundation, but we really have a team working together. My role is just to. Uh, give the guidance and the overall direction uh, so we have a board and all of us are volunteers we work voluntarily because we understand that dementia is a very important problem and in sri lanka too with a rapidly aging population we need to uh, sensitize people as well as the government uh, and the health services to respond to this need and we are a non government organization and we work both supporting patients and their client and their families um, increasing awareness and also working closely with the world health organization and the ministry of health uh, and supporting them in whatever way we can to uh, think and plan uh, for people with dementia and support people with dementia So as you said showed me the foundation and you said it's free for people because many of uh, the people who get this disease are been locked up in their home not for anything for the protection and also sometimes we as children get angry uh, with our stressful lifestyle and work so this foundation provides a lot of facilities prophecy if you can just give few of the facilities that are available So see the global uh, idea as you rightly said is when people get diseases like this is to just keep them at home or uh, send them to an home or a institution where people are you know just kept and looked after i think that's not the right approach um, i think the whole approach today is about building dementia friendly communities mm-hmm. communities that support people with dementia as well as their families because sometimes you can't blame the families because they are under a lot of stress when a person gets dementia because we don't have any care services or much support services in sri lanka yeah so in that sense i think we need to all support each other 
and also support people with dementia. So we have this activity center which we hope will be a model center um, that can be replicated all over the country and I know that uh, even the health services in Sri Lanka are thinking of developing uh, such centers all over the country where even say for instance we have many elders communities in Sri Lanka you may have heard that there are elder societies and so on even in many towns and villages so even the elder societies themselves can uh, start little activity centers like this where people with dementia can go to and to help so the first thing we provide is respite care in a sense. This is not a place where we uh, board people or keep them here because that is not the approach for dementia. It's about, it's a therapeutic center where if a person with dementia can come to. So it will help them to be active. Here we do therapeutic activities to stimulate the brain. Uh, exercise, music, therapy and so on and so forth which we are still developing uh, and improving and it's also a, a place uh, which will give the families a little bit of respite for them too so that they can have some free time, the main care to have some space because they know that their uh, mother or father who has dementia is well cared for and looked after so they can come here and spend the day from 9 a.m to 3 p.m uh, we provide a free vegetarian lunch a healthy diet uh, and also conduct all these activities which are done by well wishers and volunteers it's a local organization all the funds is donated by many people who understand the importance of this problem and therefore our main activity in the center is to conduct this and through this we have also other there are medical students or doctors in training who come and see this facility we also conduct certain training programs okay. on dementia care and so on and uh, there are numerous uh, we have uh, other activities like awareness raising programs we have uh, program officers who go out and conduct uh, uh, programs in uh, certain villages and uh, uh, we have uh, also information leaflets, care support groups and so many other uh, activities which you can see on our website I think I won't have time to explain yeah, all of them but it's something that you know everyone can get connected and it's not something hidden and it's just that it's actually it's a privilege to Sri Lanka to have a a foundation like this and a help center where people not only the patient actually patient may forget but the families who are with those patients can actually uh, get can get help as you all are correctly said I think from the beginning you said we don't call them patients we call them clients because we don't want them to feel that there is there's this hospital so we give them that they are our clients that is the honor you give it to them so finally uh, professor I'm going to ask you what is your message to the people who are you know who has these uh, patients and also to the uh, whole citizen because some of them may not care about so they may think these are mad or these are sick these are these people are having a, some other sickness what is your message to them yeah as you rightly said that is the concept we have to change because dementia is a reality at this moment in time we cannot cure this condition and many of us may get affected by it and many of our family members too may be affected and the answer is not to exclude someone who gets dementia because dementia is a slowly progressive disease many people will live with this condition for many years and we need to prevent the decline and support them and help them to lead lives uh, that are normal or close to normal as possible where we become an inclusive community where people with dementia are accepted in society in our families in our family gatherings it's very important that they are brought and those of us who are with them understand and uh, forgive them for little mistakes they may make because of dementia have some patience yes patience understanding and knowing that uh, we have to uh, support uh, 
those with dementia because we are eventually supporting ourselves as a community and uh, helping each other which is also the core of any good society. Yes, today discussion was focused on making awareness about Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Uh, we had Professor Shian Williams, the president of Lanka Alzheimer's Foundation. As he rightly said, having patience and empathy matters a lot and making a inclusive, uh, making them inclusive in our society and just to accept them, not to put them out is more important. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. I think you gave a, uh, well, actually you educated, even me, I was, uh, we know the disease, we know the name, but we didn't know the role of us, but you actually gave a good discussion and thank you so much. Uh, and it's a privilege to have a discussion with you and I hope for our viewers got more knowledge about it and we act rather than we react to the situation. Today Plenty with Sulo brought to you from Lanka Alzheimer Foundation. Be tuned to Daily Mirror Online.